failing the forward, and to Jason Polly for his thoughtful afterward, and of course to Gillian and Verna Bickley and to Provost for their continued faith in my work, and for publishing what has been described, perhaps fairly, as a difficult book. <laughs> Not difficult in the sense of complicated syntax, long words, or esoteric quotations and references, but in whether the novel should be understood as a comedy or a tragedy, whether it is simply a disgruntled foreigner's uneducated whine, or a serious attempt to hold a mirror up to human behavior as it exists in today's Hong Kong, a city with many cultural layers, but not one single identity, where people from different places and their children are called expatriates rather than immigrants, as in most host cities. For the best part of 50 years, I paid my bills through a day job in human resource management. It was a career I got into by accident, and which, apart from the obvious benefit of the paycheck and the appeal of working in many industries in a variety of countries, has, al has allowed me endless opportunity to observe my fellow men and women in all their states, in their calmness and rage, in their beauty and ugliness, in their generosity and meanness, in their humour and dullness, in their sobriety and drunkenness, <laughs> in their reason and stupidity, and in short, as both angels and demons. To a greater or lesser extent, every individual combines the entire spectrum of virtue and vice. Every saint has the potential to be a sinner, and every sinner has the capacity to be a saint, whether in thought or deed, or whether society's highest or lowest. The pleasure of reading fiction comes partly from seeing ourselves reflected in the inner debates and actions of a story's characters. And the pleasure of writing lies in the hope that by revealing what many haven't suspected, our, our fictions are both entertainment and instructive. Nobility, however, while a worthy precept and occasional topic of fiction, lacks both entertainment and instruction. Piety may be a state we should all aspire to, but inescapably and by itself it lacks drama, and when taken to inordinate length, can prove unremittingly boring. My choice, therefore, is to focus on humanity's failings. A personnel manager, such as I have been, never tells staff they are perfect and have nothing to improve. Not one would say there is no room for greater efficiency or productivity, no opportunity to lower cost, nor that increased speed and accuracy could achieve a higher ROI. In the trade of managing people, we call employees' weaknesses improvement opportunities, which is a kind of way of explaining poor performance, when what is really meant is you are always late, your interpersonal skills are lamentable, your reports never use a spell check, Generally speaking, you're a mess. <laughs> but unadulterated deficiencies are entertainment's raw material. Think of the Goon Show and Monty Python. And their exposure to the light of day, like a weak performance, is the only way to make them better. That is where we look for instruction, and why my characters are the Mr. McCorbers and Uriah Heaps of Hong Kong. They are not the movers and shakers of an international city, but common and middle of the ladder folk thrown together in a sort of community where the flawed and inadequate are recognisable for their ubiquity and for playing out their competing intrigues, jealousies, neuroses and dependencies. The tale I've chosen to tell is set mainly on a single street. Something similar could have been constructed about a road in Shanghai or Birmingham or Cape Town or Buenos Aires. But no one need travel that far to find a story worth hearing when engrossing histories lie waiting for us on our doorstep and in the altercations taking place in the apartment overhead. This book takes as its source the places and people we encounter every day, in the buildings where we live, on the stairs, along the corridors and behind closed doors, and in the street outside, where the gossipy, the uncommunicative, the boastful, the preoccupied, the controlling, the selfish and the impatient play out their lives. It has been said before that there are indeed tongues in trees, books in the running brooks, and sermons in stones. The poet could have added the stories in bricks, mortar, and woodwork. But whether there is good in everything or not, 
I will have to leave you to judge. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.